Hi there, welcome to User Divine Functions Video 1. In this video series, I'm going to be talking about how to create our own functions. Excel currently has countless functions, but unfortunately, they can't think of everything, so there's a lot of times where a user like myself might need to come up with another way to do something. So for instance, the thing we're going to do today is going to be a concatenate range function. So Excel actually offers a concatenate function, but unfortunately you can't put a range in there. It doesn't like it. It only returns tests, even if I uh, try to make it an array function. So basically what we're going to do is allow us to put a range in a concat function and then also a separator. So our second argument would be some kind of separator. So currently the function works like this. I have to pretty much pass in all the arguments, like so. And I can't put in any separator unless I were to you know, add the separator to the cell itself. So it returns that. And what I would like to do is make my own function. I'm going to call it concat range. And it's going to take two arguments, control shift to A, uh, a range argument. So I'm just going to throw that and a separator argument. I'm just going to put in a period. It works just like that. So like I said before, in this video series, we're going to be doing all different types of UDFs, um, pretty much anything I can think of. And hopefully, it'll be a nice kind of stepping stone into other programming languages, how to program. Almost every programming language use uh, functions in some way or another. So um, learning how to create them is really helpful. So with that being said, I will go into the back end. You can do that by hitting Alt F11. And that should bring up this guy. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of some of this. So this is the VBA IDE, or Development Environment. And uh, basically what we have here is a module. And you write your code in this. This is your locals window. So this is going to show us our variables, what their values are currently, and their type as we run through it. Um, this is our project viewer on the left. And if you want to look at more windows and stuff, you can actually go to this view. There's a few other windows you can look at. So it's pretty uh, standard and basic IDE, but very useful when it comes to Excel. So what we're going to do is write this concat range function. It's actually pretty easy to write functions. You kind of have to just sort of start by thinking about, OK, what are we trying to do with this? What arguments are we going to accept? So if you remember when I wrote the concat range, um, it's not going to work now because I commented, I deleted the code. But uh, we wanted to take in two arguments, one being a range, and then the next being a separator argument. So uh, in this case, it was a period. Obviously, it could be whatever. So when we write this function, we're actually going to write it the same way we would write it in Excel. If I go back into my module by hitting Alt F11, we're going to start by writing the word function. And this just tells Excel this isn't a subroutine, it's a function. So there's basically two different types of, of methods in Excel. Functions always have a return value, while subroutines are they're more like actions or macros. So I'm going to just say function concat range. Um, I'm going to do it in something called camel case. Open parentheses, my first argument is going to be called my range. And I'm actually going to type the range. VBA, you don't necessarily have to dimension all your variables or declare them. But in this case, I'm going to. So I'm going to say my range as range. I spelled that wrong. And then I'm add another variable or argument. And I'm going to call it my separator or my sep for my separator. I'm just going to say as string. It's actually a good idea to type your variables. So I'm going to close that off. And what's my return type going to be? Well, it's going to be a string. So as soon as I hit enter, Excel goes, OK, function's a keyword, so I'm going to make that blue. The words that I write, the variables, are going to be in, in gray. OK, so now what we can do is declare our first variable. And I'm going to make a string, because I, uh, I pretty much want to return a string. So this variable is going to be past all of the objects in my range. So I'm just going to call it um, current range and I'm actually going to dim is short for dimension. I'm going to dim that as a string. And then 
I'm going to set current range equal to nothing, like so. The next thing we need to do is figure out, well, how are we going to pass all of the items in my range into this current range? And what we can do is use something called a for each statement. So VBA has a lot of different loops you can use, while loops, do, uh, do loops, for loops, and for each loops. For each is special because it works only with collections. So when we run through a for each statement, it's like saying, okay, for each item in a, in a set of items, do this, and then go through it until we're finished. So that's great because that means we don't need to create like some sort of iteration statement having a, a variable equal a number and then adding on to it. So I can say for each and make up any name for another variable cell in my range and then the end of a for each statement always should be a next and then the variable name which is cell and I'm gonna just say if the cell does not equal nothing so that's just saying hey if the, the current item doesn't equal blank then we have to make a new variable now uh, I'm just gonna say r equals the cell and my sep, and that's it. So r is a new variable. We're, we should actually uh, we can actually declare r up here. So I'm just going to say dim r as string. Like I said before, VBA has implicit typing, so we don't have to dimension all of our variables. But it's good practice too, because you could run into errors if you don't otherwise. So I'm going to say r equals cell and my sep. And then what I can do is say current range is equal to current range ampersand. Ampersand is a way of joining two things. Ampersand variable r. Um, then I'm going to close off the if. I'm just going to end if. And that should work. Of course we have to, this is a function, so we have to have it return something. And you do that by saying concat range is the name of it is equal to current range. Okay, so uh, now that we're done, we can actually go ahead and in, in, back into Excel and test it. And I can just say equals concat, and you'll see concat range right there. You can use this uh, keyboard shortcut to show you the arguments. It's called Control Shift A. That's so. As you can see, those are my arguments. So for my range, I'm just going to highlight this range. Uh, my separator, I'm going to put into quotes and make it a comma. There you go. That's how you do it. If I wanted to put a space in there as well, I can go ahead and do that as well. One thing, though, is that it might be worth killing off this guy. So right where it says OK space comma. That's not really necessary, so we need to delete the separating string off the end of the concat range. So I'm just going to go back into here. Okay, so now that I'm back in here, I'm actually just going to uh, pull off those last two items by using a built-in function. So I'm going to say uh, current range is equal to left, and left is actually a function in Excel. Our VBA, and because it's already made, there's no reason to rewrite the wheels. We could make our own left function, but rather instead, let's just use theirs. And so I can say left, the string would be the current range and the length. So left is starting from the left and then going X amount of characters over to the right and then deleting everything else. I'm just going to say the length is going to be the length, which is another Excel function, the length of current range and minus the length of the separating string, which I called my sep. So that should work. All right, so if we go back into Excel, double click it, hit enter, now you see that comma space is deleted off of the end. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll, hopefully I'll do a lot more of these. And they're kind of fun, actually. They're really, I think they're, they're I'm a nerd, but I think they're, pretty much enjoyable. So hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, leave a comment, any questions. All right, thanks.